Good afternoon, welcome back to the three flat caps and a whip it. For sure, we've usually three blokes in flat caps, just showing that it's good to talk. The occasional very tedious link to mental health and working in schools, but really it's just a bit of group supervision for us. We've actually got a whip it this week, we've not been let down. <coughs> James. <coughs> <laughs> No, Dig, don't worry, he doesn't listen to it anyway. But, uh, joined, as ever, by the continuously ginger Luke. Yeah. All right, you all right, everybody? Yeah, and the always balding John. Do you like that? Well, added, added a bit of a slight... Well, you put some real effort into that. Yeah, yeah. I've been, been working on that one we've got, we've, got a, <laughs> we've got a Jacob throwing stones from glass houses this <laughs> afternoon, <laughs> haven't we? certainly have, yeah. I was waiting for that one. Uh, and the whippet that we've got with us this week is my sister. We've got Charlotte with us. Hello, everybody. You all right? Yeah. Good. So, we'll do the usual stuff. We'll go around, see what we've been up to, a bit of a catch-up, and then we'll crack on this week. Oh, this week. It's like we do a weekly one. <laughs> <laughs> this month. This month. We'll yeah. Monthly. Uh, we're looking at relationships, and we'll dive into that in a minute. So, who wants to, who wants to go first? Anybody want to dive in with what they've been up to? I can. Not much different from last time. Same old. Same old, yeah. Um, joined a band again. Hey. So, I'm back playing. So, I suppose with the relationships, I've forged... Semi new ones because I kind of knew them anyway. Um, Reformed really. Can we have a band yeah. name? Can we plug it? Oh, yeah, uh, Knitting Grooves. Knitting Grooves. <laughs> but you'll find them on like SoundCloud and stuff and Spotify and iTunes and stuff like that. Got an EP out just out on vinyl as well. Yes. Um, a big shout out to Drain Age, which is kind of like a heavier sort of metal band who have just released a cassette with their EP and they're playing tomorrow, which will be Saturday the 14th. Yeah. Uh, um, Wolf Chambers in Leeds. Not that that makes a difference because this is going to go out weeks after that. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good gig. Yeah. It was a, yeah. It was a really I mean, good I came gig. back from that gig and it was good. Go check out Drainage. But yeah, that's, um, apart from that, not up to much. Um, bar Kitchen. Oh, bar Kitchen. Bar Kitchen. Yeah. That's very grown up, isn't it? I know. It is grown up. So from rock and roll to kitchens. It is. Is it a rock and roll kitchen? No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what else anyone else been up to? Anyone else want to go? Yeah, I'm not as much, not as nothing as exciting as John has. Um, not about the kitchen. I've just been travelling the country this week, spreading the coronavirus. I think. Um, trying not to spread my the coronavirus. Corona, oh, you gotta <laughs> get <it>. <laughs> <laughs> Taking my hand, washing me everywhere, giving people elbow bumps. The children have come up with an interesting game in the playground. Yeah, Corona Tig. Oh, yeah, 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 we've had that at our school. So you run around and tig people. Yeah, since the tig, you're giving apparently. them corona. Right. So, yeah, yeah you know, so interesting. The, the humour or the irony is that they probably are. Probably are, giving <laughs> it, yeah. 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 So I've been to one end of the country at the start of the week in Cleethorpes, then the other end of the country in Blackpool, supporting some large academies with some um, quite big projects, really, around behaviour. So it really work-wise at home. I've not really done anything exciting. Off to Ikea this weekend. Football's been cancelled. Kitchen? No, no kitchen. Oh. I have to get some beds, some bunk beds. We need to move the uh, we need bunk to move beds. the boys back in together. So that's going to be a bit of a nightmare. Ooh, relationships. Yeah, they've been they've been separate for like two years now. But Roxanne's getting a she's getting a little bit big for a cop. So she needs a who, she needs a, a big Roxanne? bed. Who's Roxanne? You know who Roxanne is. You know who Roxanne is. And if you forgot who Roxanne is, shame on you. Shame on you. Um, so yeah, putting them together from bed shopping. Sam, you got right? too much coffee today then. Have I got coffee breath? No, um, he's just excited. Bit excited. It's because his sister's yeah. here. Yeah, I'm just really excited. <laughs> oh, okay. So the relationship is causing oh, to show like up a little bit in the relationship, yeah. job. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. For me, then, kind of off the back of what you've just said, Luke, I think it's worth mentioning, like how busy it is at the minute. Last last week, what was the start? Fourteen different schools, five different local authorities between the two of us. Yeah. Um, which is pretty crazy when you think about it. It's a nice bit of system influence, if you want to call it that. Yeah. It's good. Nice to be in different places. I reckon that we'll be in the news as super carriers, though, of coronavirus. <laughs> 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 the reason the North was infected with two blokes from Springwell. Just two mugshots. <laughs> in Wellspring, yeah. <laughs> Have you seen these men? Don't let these men into your school. <laughs> but I suppose, personally, oh, not much. A bit boring, really. Two different results with rugby, kind of on a bit of an ecstasy last weekend against a, a, a lead side. Josh, who's one, been one of our guests, been one of our whippets, yeah. Slotted a last last play drop goal to win us the game, which was pretty good. Everyone piled in off the sideline, and you know was, you played that you play that moment over in your in your head as a kid. For anyone that's bothered about rugby, you, Johnny Wilkinson World Cup final, etc. You play it over and over in your mind, and that happened for us. It was pretty. Pretty good, pretty pretty special. Has Johnny Wilkinson's back got better yet? <laughs> He's always been over, hasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Just straightened it out yet. And then this weekend we lost in the last play, so it's kind of uh, 
ecstasy to back down to yeah real life. Yeah, yeah like not it. so good. Yeah. But yeah, that's about it. Really, we give Smithy some hammer for missing that last kick. Was it his fault that you lost? Uh, well, you don't want to yeah, I didn't really want to say to be honest you, but yeah, he missed the tackle that ah. kind of lost us the game at the weekend. So. Shame on you, Smithy. Again, he's probably not going to listen to this, so hero to zero, big time for Josh. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> unfortunately, that's the way the cookie crumbles, isn't it? So that's that. What have you been up to, Charles? So, I mean, as it's already been mentioned, coronavirus is going absolutely nuts. So from a, a retailer perspective, so I work for a big supermarket, we're just seeing sales go absolutely mental. We have a an hourly sales graph that tracks the plan we expect to see of a sort of from midnight to midnight predicted sales mm-hmm. and then what we're actually selling. And we're just consistently like 40% above what we're expecting to sell. So it's just been pretty busy week doing that, trying to get as much stock as we can into <laughs> stores, not having any toilet mm-hmm. roll, not having any rice and pasta. That's got to be good for business, though, surely. Oh, yeah, you, it's I'm really good. I'm guessing you're expecting a massive crash, though. I've got to yeah. say, until the panic's over. Yeah, yeah. yeah, well, this is the thing. So at the minute, because there's no sign of it ending, and we've been told that, like, so normally one out of two meals is I- eaten out in restaurants, Yeah. and now people are eating in because they're too scared to go out. So we're now seeing that footfall Wow, what a statistic, guys. One out of two meals is eaten in a restaurant? Yeah. How many meals is a takeaway? <laughs> yeah. It's one out... <laughs> One out of one for you. <laughs> <laughs> Every meal, <laughs> including breakfast. <laughs> Did somebody say? You can't plug that. Do I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> close. Yeah, very close. Sorry, I can snip it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, a bit of a pandemic then. What about at home? Anything going off at home? So, I'm just car shopping at the minute, trying to find myself a new car because I don't have one because I just come back from Spain, so... I'm getting settled back into the world of the UK and all the coronavirus stuff. That's <laughs> weird, isn't it? It's like coming back, you've been living in Spain for a year, I think, right? Yeah, just over a year. Yeah, and back for back living with mum and dad. Yeah, back so settling in. That's an interesting new dynamic. To get used <laughs> to again. Uh, Lots yeah. to talk about it again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> open floor relationships. <laughs> so we'll crack on then, shall we? Let's do it. I'm sure some of that will come back up uh, as we move throughout. I suppose it's a bit of an open floor, really. I wanna, I've got a couple of questions just to fly out, see what people think about, and then, you know, as usual, we'll, we'll we'll see what people think about it. I think relationships is a really, really interesting one. I've been thinking, because we've attempted to record this a few times, <laughs> been thinking in between while well, we've been getting together what sort of stuff to talk about, obviously, and I think it's interesting. One of the points that I mentioned on a previous podcast about change was the different dynamics of going in it's obviously part of my role and, and similarly some of the guys that are, are here going in and working with different people so you're forming new relationships quite often and the impact and kind of getting what well, you are know, using your, your neuroception i suppose mm. for want of a better way of saying it to kind of judge people not judge them in a sense of you know making a judgment but to try and understand how they work a little bit so that you can Effectively, yeah, the relationship. and effectively, kind of, I don't know, with, without sounding really businessy, make the uh, make the most of that transaction. I suppose relationships are transactions, aren't they? In in some way, shape, or form. So I think I don't know. I want to know what your thoughts are in a sense of how do your relationships with people affect the way you work with them? I suppose is a good way to start. Anybody got anything for that? The stronger they are, the better your work in life is, really, isn't it, I suppose? You can be more open and honest with people. If one of you guys has done something to upset me at work, I'm, I'm more than happy to tell you because our relationship's strong enough to be able to accept that sort of that critique. But if I was to, I don't know, give, if I had to challenge another member of staff somewhere I didn't have as close a relationship with, I'd probably challenge it in a much more subtle way than uh, have that sort of open and honest culture in, in fear of their response back to me and sort of damaging the relationship further. So I think relationships are massively important to, to working with people. But like it's, it's hard to keep those relationships really strong when you only see people every so often because they're based on experiences, aren't they? Yeah. For every negative experience you have with somebody, we know you need seven positive experiences to form a strong relationship. And it's um, it can sometimes be hard in a working day to keep those positive experiences above the negative ones. Yeah, I think in the workplace as well. Your relationship, if it's stronger, I think you're able to do your job better. Yeah. So if it, you know, if you have a sort of more open relationship, especially like with your line managers, bosses, things like that, mm. and if they get you and they understand, then being able to work in our preferred way, effectively, efficiently. Of course, yeah, you need CPD. You need to sort of mold into a role. You need to be able to sort of adapt and things. But 
I still also think that if you're if you've got a good relationship with the people around you, including your managers, you're able to do your job more effectively. Does that come with a kind of a sense of under, uh, mutual understanding? I suppose, in a sense of, I get that you get me, and how I work. I think it's trust, professional yeah. trust. Yeah, it's yeah. trust. Yeah, it's, it's a professional trust. How does that work for you? Because I know that you've recently come back from obviously come to Spain. Yeah, to be fair, it is something that I've noticed. Not a massive change, but for example, where how we were all positioned in Spain in terms of the office layout, because obviously I work in an office environment rather than in a school. The manager had their own their own office, so you didn't really have that close relationship as such. Um, to work with that and we were I mean to be fair we were left to our own devices and, and trusted that we would get on with the job whereas we, in my new role we're all sat together like I'm sat next to my manager now. so we've got a much closer relationship she doesn't, and they don't micromanage they do yeah. is that trust to, to get on with what you're doing still but we've got much more of a friend relationship rather than a manager relationship. Is that is that more productive then or do you find yourself messing around a bit more and, and dilly-dallying and probably not getting as much work done? A bit of both really. I think for me, so something that I've found coming back into the business is people, obviously people have changed, people have been promoted and she used to be at my level. Mm. So it is something I'm having to try and remember ah, okay. that actually she is above me now in a, you know, in, in that, that hierarchy um, and we do have moments where we're having a laugh and we're having a joke, but at the same time we know when we need to get on with work, we need to get on with work. And I think because we've got that good relationship, it doesn't become an issue like we know where the la- like not we can't be messing around twenty four seven. We've got work to do and things. Yeah. Is, that, is that conscious or, or unconscious? In a sense, is it like openly like right? We've had enough now. It just kind of peters out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just kind I of think get back to it. It's yeah. just like an unwritten rule. Like because I think because well, because we're in an open plan office, so we're all sat round each other. Everyone will maybe have a bit of a chat as the day goes on, and it'll be like you'll have a conversation and then you'll get back on with your work. It's not like a right guys, come on, you've been chatting for ten minutes, let's get on with it. It's just a natural thing as the day goes on. Like you might have a five minute chat in the morning when everyone comes in. How was your day? Like how oh, was last night and all that, but there is that trust and that sort of understanding that when you need to do something, you'll do it. Mm. Well, there's um, the argument for break, like brain breaks and stuff like that as well. And the so same. I think it's helpful if you're gonna, to have if, those. If you're going like, yeah, to talk about efficiency, and I suppose the, the immediate thought is, well, if you're messing about, then you're not working. But actually, nah, yeah. you know, to, to have that break, and we do it all the time, don't we, with children, where they need that movement break or they need that sensory break or they need something so that when they go back to the task, they're actually on it and they're on task. Yeah, they're, they're right. Right. Yeah. And, they're yeah. do, and, and they're doing it at their level rather than it sort of not being as good as it could be. That is definitely a different... Thing. There's a different difference in Spain and England there, which I know is yeah culturally yeah because like I found over in Spain they are very much like will work 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 from and do way more hours than they're supposed to and no one really has a chat so it's yeah. very quiet in the office and you do feel that sort of lag where you're like actually you know what I just need even if it's just to go nip to the bathroom I just need to get up and get away from my desk because I've not even spoken to anyone in a couple of hours because everyone's so concentrated on doing the job did they have a siesta where you were no, so I worked for an American company, so it was we worked all all, all the way through. through. But differences there as well was the the culture in the UK is a lot of the time we will eat our lunches at our desks, whereas in the in Spain everyone would go away to the canteen for an hour. So you get that oh, that good. conversation and that relationship building at lunchtime where you're not sat just eating and trying to work at the same time, maybe right. having a bit of a cow. Is that actively encouraged or yeah, is it frowned yeah. upon if you sit at your desk it and is, sort of eat If your lunch? you sit at your desk and eat your lunch, you're weird. Right, like, okay. So I found that really, re- really refreshing. Mm. Unsociable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but all the other time you can't talk. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's concentrated, like packed into that one hour. But yeah. I, know, I know some people from Spain, some Spanish people, and, and not to Benidorm, but like real Spain. Um, <laughs> and, yeah. and and they do, they eat a lot later and it's all family orientated and there's yeah. no TV and they make a, an effort and a point of it. And I suppose it's a bit easier because they can go all al fresco outside and stuff. But it does feel like it's it's like meal times are used. Is that right? Like culturally, just as a time to talk. Time to yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Have you found coming back into, a, I think, have you come back to a different team? Have you yeah, found that so in? that was... A little bit nerve wracking, I suppose, because it's you go from knowing everybody, even if it's not, you know, at a very deep level, and having your people that you can you've got quite a close relationship with to going, well, I only know maybe one or two people, mm. 
their roles have changed how's the dynamic going to have changed am I going to get on with the new people in the team you know you're spending more more time with them than you do with your family when we obviously have a full-time job and if you don't get on with them it can make as we mentioned earlier your working relationship quite difficult and, and like you were saying like you might not feel comfortable challenging someone if you need to because you've not got that strong relationship but actually everyone's been really nice and there are a lot of different personalities within the team which you would expect but I think because again we're all sat so close together and everybody is sort of so open that relationship's built quite quickly between everybody and myself because you've got no option but to chat and to sort of get to know each other and learn about everybody and like their families and their relationships and how everybody works together and stuff so it's been quite nice actually so I was a little bit apprehensive going back in going oh god I'm gonna be like the odd one out like I'm not gonna know I, I don't know anybody in the team and I'm yeah I've got comfortable in the relationships I had in Spain yeah. with my work colleagues but actually every I think because everyone in my team is so open and chatty it's kind of like moved that relationship on quicker than I thought it probably would have done if I'd have just been left on my own devices, so... Yeah. We're talking about relationships, but we've gone straight into talking about working relationships. Not our partners, not our friends. We've talked about working relationships. You spend so much time with each other in some of the situations and scenarios you're in. Yeah, you, you rely on the to, people so much, don't, don't you? Yeah, yeah. And trusting them and... Mm. And I think it's really important you come back to that word of trust because, you know, if you're working with the young people that they're going to a crisis and you're working with uh, colleagues, you've got to be able to trust them. Absolutely. Otherwise, you you know, people can get hurt. So it does resonate in a sense of maybe starting something new that, that draws me back down to down to that. Most of the schools that we'll ever go in will have, like, a, a head's office and stuff like that. But the school that I'm currently at, which mm. you'll know today, Luke, because yeah. you were there, sort of. And it had spare desks, which is why Luke was working there today. And our SLT management office it is it's got what six six desks at it and a it's big, open like a big boardroom desk yeah, in the yeah. middle. Um, and we're all kind of in there and I think that makes a massive difference as well. So in a very similar way, if you need sort of those ad hoc conversations between each other, safeguarding or just generally something to do at school, you know, you're already there, you don't have to go seek somebody out, you don't have to maybe send obviously not for safeguarding, but like an email where Whereas you might do, and you end up with an email chain, which again, all right, it's fine, and it's a, it, it can be efficient, but at the same time, in terms of relationships and that face to face, it has a nice open that. feel yeah. to it. It's welcoming, yeah. and, and the kids are in, people are in. It's it's it is nice. It makes more efficient working. I think you lose the value of a of a good connection and a good relationship through a through an email. Like you've said, they can be efficient, and obviously, we won't be really. It'd be hard to survive without them, I think, in the work that we do. And but I need them just for my memory, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, no, because, <laughs> because you, everybody's got so much going off. If you didn't have that sort of stuff to track what you were doing, different jobs or different you know, things that you needed to get sort of done, you'd struggle. I imagine it's the same sort of principle in your role as well, but I think there's real value. I've seen in, in our sites um, and some loads of the schools that we work in, I've worked in several where they've got the different environment of they've got heads in different offices and they've got senior leaders scattered across the school in their own offices. And equally, I've seen them, you know, come together. And I do think there's real benefits to both. I really like that, that you know, your setting together. where you've got yeah. where you've got everybody together. And I suppose it's, it's not that big, though, so it's kind of, you know, for us, we're able well. to do that. But I suppose one of the advantages, I'm guessing, of having SLT dotted around yeah, a site me. would be that the site is that big yeah. if you need someone from SLT. They're quite close by. There. Yeah, you know, I can imagine in a, in a quite large mainstream secondary school, potentially it's, it's much more practical to have heads of year and your senior leaders dotted around in different places so yeah. they're more accessible. And it gets to a certain with time, people. you know, like... With you know, people. School finishes, kids are left, you're still working, but then you just... There's naturally a lot more sort of, what, you know, supervision, like chats, just yeah. like, oh, this happened today, feature, oh, that happened today, oh, did it? And, you know, just having those sort of, you know, five-minute chats that you're talking about. So I think it's very beneficial supervision-wise and well-being-wise as a staff team to have that, you know, to have everybody in the same place, even just to have those conversations with each other. And just, just maybe uh, where you might, you might not normally, because someone's there, you might just say, oh, do you know what, this happened, what do you think? Or do you know what, this, you know, this child did this today, or this member of staff did this today. What did you think of that? I thought this, or I could have done this, or, you know, maybe I should do that next time, that type of thing. You're not isolated either, are you? And I think, you know, if you think about stress bucket or you know taking too many things on board i think you've got like you say with the supervision element you've got much more capacity and access to be able to offload and and mm. and look make sure you're not taking on or taking home or taking on board too much stuff which is mm. obviously a good thing to do 
I think as well, because you're working with people in the same setting that know what you're doing, mm. when you do say you're like, oh, I just want to like this happened or like, oh, for God's sake, I just received this email or whatever, the people you're working with understand, whereas sometimes if you go home and you vent to your partner, they don't quite understand the same because they might not work in the same field as you or they just don't understand why you would get angry or yeah. annoyed or whatever about mm. a certain thing yeah, that's, that. That, that has annoyed you that day. So yeah. I think there's that as well. I think there's, I think as well, there's the tendency to want to try and problem solve when you're at home. So like when someone comes home and said, oh, I've had this today, they feel the need to kind of problem solve it. But when you're in a work environment, because like you said, they know the context of it, they can just empathise and help you yeah. through it rather than... Try, try, to, to, try to yeah. try to minimalize it or try to sort Stick of a problem line. solve yeah. Yeah. Or, or you know try to well it could be worse it could be this instead of all that you kind of just get listened to yeah yeah I get that I've bought I don't know if your dad's told you you might have seen him reading it I bought him the boy was raised by a dog oh, oh yeah yeah keeps yeah. telling Brilliant me to, I think he's just about to finish it so yeah. he said I should read Brilliant. it he took it when we went away we went to Wales in the holiday just gone or it might be the holiday previous to that depending on when this goes out <laughs> <laughs> alright <laughs> what a <laughs> little digger editor right there <laughs> We're just going to stick a few more erms in just to wind yeah, well, it up. Yeah, now. it might get done quicker if we were, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> didn't even do that on purpose. <laughs> um, I can't stop now. <laughs> yeah, I bought him that book and he's, he seems to be really enjoying it. But one of the reasons behind buying him that was to hopefully give him a bit more of an understanding uh, about what I do. And I think sometimes it can be, not that I'm any, you know, on the same level as Bruce Perry by any means, obviously, but it gives you a bit of context, hopefully. Yeah. And obviously, yeah. for any of you that have read the book, it's a real eye-opener, and it, and it can be a bit tough to read in, in spots, but emotionally and kind of heavy as in, you know, the content, but hopefully that'll give him a bit more of an understanding. Was, yeah, a bit more of an understanding, yeah. and while we were away in Wales, you did have a bit of a talk about some of the stuff while we were driving down, and he mentioned it to a few dad, people. I think he, he's convinced that I'm a pupil still at school. <laughs> So I might, I might buy him that for Father's Day or something. I think mean, that's a good place to start moving on to personal relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's go for it. So why did you feel the need to give your dad? I think um, we've always had conversations about, it's not, it's not only alcohol fueled, but about the, you know, the way the world's set up. I've obviously worked in education for seven or eight years plus now. I've obviously always spoken about that with, me, with, with parents and friends and family and, and partner and whatnot. And sometimes you can have differences in opinions, which is fine. There's no problem with that. Everyone's entitled to, the, to their opinion about things. But I think it's important to be informed. And, you know, we would say to anybody that we went to support, you know, you can, there's a spectrum across the way of education in the way of thinking, I suppose, rather than the way of education about how we should be and sort of practices and, and that sort of stuff. And I think if you find yourself right at the far end of one of those, you've probably kind of strayed off a little bit. Really, really important to be informed and to, to read things that you don't agree with and to, to make sure that you're trying to understand where people come from yeah. and where their informations, where their kind of opinions are formed from and their experiences and all that sort of stuff. So we've always had those conversations and I just kind of suppose I just wanted to... I was like, you need to get your dad on the Podcast, maybe. yeah, no, I'm sure he'd come on. Yeah, be good. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I, I just suppose wanted to just support his understanding a little bit about, about the work that I do or, yeah. or the field, not necessarily the work that I do. I, I feel like I'm comparing maybe give more context to the conversations you're having. So, when you're yeah, having, a little bit, so when you're having a conversation about work, yeah, because there's more under, understanding of a background of yeah, a type, then that will build your relationship as well. Yeah, you know, the conversations will be more meaningful. To be, mm more sort of a reciprocal conversation. And then and I think hopefully then, you know, alongside all of that, it'll help just to understand each other and understand, you know, relationships full stop. Yeah. I think especially in the line of work that we do and the stuff that we talk about, you become more and more ever kind of aware and self-aware about how all of the things that we talk about in terms of development and trauma, et cetera, and the way the brain works you become more and more aware of how that's impacting on yourself. Not mm -hmm. all the time, obviously, because that's impossible. Cause, um, we, that's because we're human and because, obviously, it's so complex. Do you find that's the same in the office or uh, retail situation? Yeah, I mean, to be fair, for a long time, I tried not to talk about work outside of the mm -hmm. office because mm -hmm. I just thought I people... I just wanted to... Like, work's work, and we should, it should be left there. Like, once you've, le once you've left the office for the day, switch off and think about all this stuff. But sometimes, like, if you've... It's been a ridiculously busy day, especially around seasonal periods and stuff when it just goes mental. Sometimes, like, you just need to go home and vent. 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, if someone's, I don't know, annoyed you that day or whatever's happened, sometimes speaking to somebody that that you are close to it in a, in a, like, in the family sense or your partner or whoever. Someone's removed. From yeah, the from the work situation actually can just make you feel a little bit better and make you, and, like, they might, you know, agree with, well, why did they act like that? Or, you know, just agree with you or see it from your side and actually make you feel a bit better about it and yeah. and that sort of thing. So, but, yeah, it's something that I've I've tried to be a bit better at because I'm quite a closed person anyway so I don't tend to talk about a lot of stuff but it is one thing I would like to do like that was one thing I wanted to talk about so like my partner would be like so how's your day been I'd be like all right yeah fine and I would never I would never go into any more depth than that because I'd be like well I don't need to tell you how my day's been I've told you it's fine and actually to build on our relationship I do need to talk about how my day's been and and that sort of thing and, and build that from there so yeah definitely do you think um, you think it's worth just explaining what Tom does? <laughs> yeah, I suppose. That <laughs> and where probably. he is? <laughs> yeah. So my other half, Tom, is a semi-professional cyclist. So we've been together for just over seven years, um, and throughout most of that, we've actually been long distance. So I've been based in the UK, and he's been in France, Belgium, most most recently Spain for the longest chunk of time, and then last year. I went out to Spain and we moved in together, so our dynamic completely changed. And then we've just gone back to going back to long distance. But yeah, so that was, I suppose... Back to normality, I think you said to me earlier, didn't you? Yeah, it, well, yeah. it is. I mean, because we were always long distance. Like, we got together and then pretty much within a month he moved away. So yeah. whereas most couples are used to, you know, obviously you, you date for a, a period of time and then after a certain amount of time you would normally move in together and then, you're, again, your relationship changes in that sense. How have you managed that distance? How have you managed to keep a strong relationship and a strong bond? I think because we were always that way, we, like I say, we were pretty much from the get-go, we weren't together in the same country. Yeah. We had to rely a lot on communication. Mm-hmm. So we would FaceTime or video call every day unless he was racing. So I think... Because we had to rely so heavily on communication, that really helped strengthen that bond between us. Because it couldn't, it's not, it wasn't something like, as for example, like we were saying, you go home at the end of the day and you, it can just ask for a hug off someone, or yeah. even just like, even just that physical touch of like putting your hand on someone's knee or anything like that. We've not had that, so we've had to find other ways to keep that bond strong. So for us, communication was a massive, massive part of... You have to put a lot more effort into that as well, don't you? Oh, absolutely. It's quite easy to go and give somebody a cuddle. I think you take it for granted as well. Yeah. Oh, you yeah, absolutely yeah, do. Not, yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it is... Re- you really underestimate it, how much just putting... Just being able to physically touch someone, how much mm. that can actually make a difference yeah, yeah. until you don't have that option. Yeah. Mm. Um, you know, if someone's feeling upset or you know, they're angry or whatever, just being able to give someone a hug Mm. is just such a massive thing. And just not being able to do that, you have to try and find other ways of communicating to be able to try and help if someone is upset or whatever. So that's something that we, I mean, I feel like we're experts at now because we've done that for so long. You'd be great working with us and our children. Yeah, that's one of our biggest things and biggest strategies is, is... is using that physical touch and that that containment, that emotional containment, that sort of that closeness, really. So yeah. you, you'd be an expert working with us. Get in for a day, Jake. Yeah. <laughs> I think the interesting thing you said, like, uh, and I know it's come through the long distance and the communication, but effort. I think that's what yeah. in relationships. I think that's what a lot of people do take for granted that you need. I think you know when you you first get together with someone and you out, you you start having that relationship, and it's that for want of a better phrase, that honeymoon period. Yeah. And everything's rosy. Dealing almost with the grieving process of that, you know, it's, it's basically those emo- those chemicals are kind of stripped away a little yeah, bit. Just yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, just because it's not the first time, time you've met someone, or it's yeah. not the first time you've looked at each other in the eyes, mm-hmm. or they've done something nice for you, or you've managed to make them smile. It's kind of unfortunate. I think that culture that we've kind of developed, that effort wise, that I don't think is necessarily something which is a focus. I know for us in our work with the children, we put a lot of effort into building those relationships for that attachment, for yeah. the relationships. So to get those chemicals able, buzzing around. Yeah, so they're able variety. to then work, so they're able to then function, so they're able to socially develop um, emotional literacy and things like that. But I, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out like where that an effort just sort of struck. 
like even going back to stuff like when I was a kid and I've, I think I mentioned it before we started recording about how I knew everyone on my street even if it was like an old deer or <laughs> you had a, perf- really a perfect auntie. example yeah, on the, <laughs> you know the, the first street I lived on opposite us an older couple and and they had um, a staffy called Bruce great dog, great name for a dog mm. and he had like a tire Bruce, swing in his back Bruce, garden Bruce. their kids were a lot older their kids had moved out I used to go over yeah. and, and at times yeah, just swing. mess around in the back garden with the dog and I knew everyone on that street yeah. and now I think the effort is just not yeah, there do you, so think that's, do you think that's because it's easier not to know people in a sense of you physically don't have to know we people we don't make as much effort to do it do we because we don't, you don't have to make as much effort to do it anymore yeah. I've got such an urge to go to ask you to go like from top to bottom of our street now see if we could name everybody not Probably, yeah now. but to be fair because <laughs> I obviously I've moved back in with my parents now there hasn't really been that much change in terms of people that have moved out. So I probably could name most people that live yeah. on our street. Whereas I think, if, as like, for example, you, who's now moved out. I know nobody. You're I know living the, with your girlfriend. I know the next door neighbour and the next door neighbour but one. But I don't know them. Yeah, I'm the you same. Know, like, yeah. My relationship, yeah. it's interesting. Like, it's a really good point. Like, I, I see how you experience it as a child. We were really lucky that my mum and my dad bought the house next door to my dad's sister. So for us, as growing up, we had four cousins next door, an auntie and an uncle, and then everybody else on the street, same context, you just knew everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were doubly lucky in a sense that we'd got actual family next door, uh, and then other children and other families on the street that were similar ages and, and whatnot. And then a park, literally. At the end of our garden. The garden stopped. There's like the half door. a track, and then the, the biggest park that's in Barnsley, by like Cawthorn Park, is there. <laughs> So for us as kids, it was a case of, right, all the cousins, they were, I mean, it's really weird, there's two and a half years between practically everybody in our family, which yeah. is weird. So like, me and my sister, and there's two and a half years between us. I think if a new family moved into your street now, where your mum and dad live, in ten years' time, if you were to ask them, do you know everybody on the street? I don't think Do you think they'd would. be able to say yes? I don't think they would. No, I, I don't think, think it goes so. back I don't know, because our street's yeah. pretty small, in it, and quite... Yeah, but I, was, but I think I in general, I'm thinking I don't a, a think general it typical yeah. street. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't, don't think they would. I, I honestly think it goes back to some of that Charlotte said as well when she came back to England. How you were forced because you were in an open office, you were forced to build up those relationships. Now everybody's. So I think close. in you know before we had you know just sitting at home watching TV, Facebook. Or, yeah, yeah, all of that sort of stuff, all that nonsense which we could talk for days and days about. I'm sure. But before we had all that. You you kind of did oh well you know what I'll just go introduce myself yeah. to next door or you know what and then and, see and then from next out. door they'll tell me who's next door but one yeah. and then from yeah. that I'll you know my relationships with people on the street will just grow but I think nowadays you know like you said you're the same so you've moved in with your partner yeah. you're in somewhere where you know you didn't grow up there have you actually gone to like see a, a neighbour no. and just say oh I'm I'm you know I'm Luke I've just moved in and blah 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 not once I've I've seen the neighbour outside when she's been having a cigarette and I've said hello. But that's it. Strange. Not making the effort to go into anybody's house or knock on the door or... Do you know, I think I've only genuinely know my neighbour because we share... So we're a semi-detached house um, and the house that we share with, we've got a hedge in between. But then the other side, the one that we're not connected to, we share a drive and, like, right. the down the side yeah. of the house yeah, and yeah. stuff. We see them quite a lot. And I think, genuinely, if that wasn't there, that relationship with, mm-hmm. the, with the people that I see more would be the same as the ones that are on the other side. So, like, I wouldn't bring their bin in. Or Why is it, then? Is it time? Is it just... Confidence. Can we maybe, not be bothered? Maybe Do we not need confidence? it? Do we not need it now? Like, before, I think we needed them relationships on the street. I needed to know who my next-door neighbours were. I needed to know that my mate lived over at road so I can go and so play So you could there. leave your kids with them. Yeah, and you needed to know that sort of stuff. But now, do you need to know that? Is it, like, a sort of a very... I know tedious thing, but is it kind of part of the throwaway culture? That kind of throwaway relationships. Don't fix it. Yeah, don't, I don't, don't work at it. Sorry, I think don't maybe fix it. Maybe also part of it is a generational thing. So, like, if we think back to like our parents or, and maybe their parents, mums, oh, there'd be a lot of stay at home mums. Mm. So, like, from that aspect, yeah, obviously, everybody yeah, knows point. everybody because they're together and they're everybody's together, at home yeah. during the day. Yeah. Um, whereas now. They might not have a mobile phone either to go and just that makes, somebody that, that, yeah. that, makes, that, makes, that makes perfect sense, yeah. You know, and I think as well, as a as in well as a nation not just but probably the UK but across the world we are very much now my dad says on a morning he walks the dog in the park and he will always say hello or morning to people and some people will not even reply if he says yeah. or just like 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 actively some avoid eye contact. Zero eye contact what are you doing why are you talking to me what yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, I thought dog walkers said hello to everybody 
<laughs> yeah. but you, we need right. we need as humans we need that connection that eye contact we've got a word for it Jake haven't we well we haven't got a word for it, I it don't is say it. it's quite an interesting word to I'm research have a go. it's really? hard to say though propinquity that's the word you said that really clearly If I would recommend highly just typing that word into Google and just having a look at um, just, just it. reading into spell it a little it. bit into the propinquity effect I can't spell it mate get on my own <laughs> P R O P I N Q U I T Y. I hope that's spelt right that you're reading from. I don't know. Some just type it in, you'll find. But it, mean, it basically, in a nutshell, it means a genuine need for human connection, and we've all got it. But are we doing it? Like I well, said, your dad's walking yeah. dogs, and people are just not that, giving that connection. That, problem, that, that really makes sense. Like you know, like you were saying, when people are having children and stuff, and probably children more closely together, and children also around the same age, so mum's been around the same age and things like that. Mm-hmm. Whereas now, I suppose, you know, the, there's, you know, career mums who are a lot older, so even if they then go to baby groups and, and they've be, got they could time be with off, a teenage mum. Yeah, so, you know, where's the connection there? Yeah. Where's the where's the common threads that they might build a relationship upon? People are finding connection in other things, aren't they? Not relationships. They're finding yeah. them in alcohol, in drugs, in... Um, internet. Internet. Technology. And doing risky things. And then people, you know, you see, we talk about it, don't we, on some of the stuff we, we deliver, and it then replaces that social interaction. Yeah. Or it replaces what younger children are seeing as mm. normal social interaction. And then that is then, I suppose... We're modelling it, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then that's not then, I suppose, generationally, as you're saying, if it is a generational thing, it's not transferring in a sense of that need for connection, the finding it in other things, which is then affecting the way that people um, access relationships or use humans. And just, yeah, develop And develop fi- physically, yeah. emotionally... You know, it's one of the things... Neurotypically. Yeah, because yeah. That, that neurotypical child isn't neurotypical anymore. Mm. Well, Why I mean, are we seeing so much... In, sorry, like such an increase in attachment? Yeah. Because that's how you develop, isn't it? Through your attachment with your caregiver and all that sort of business, without diving it into too much depth. That that relationship is key. And if that's not, you know, in, in a sense, good enough as it, as it needs your to circle, be... Your circle of intimacy. Yeah, if that's not in, in, in the right place... I'm and finding as well a lot of people many, who have a poor circle of intimacy, they don't access the other circles after that, so they don't really see their extended family. They don't see, they don't join in with um, football clubs and rugby clubs, and then we get them in school, and they've they've not had those attachments, and we receive the behaviour in schools uh, from that inner circle, that that really poor circle that's not had good enough care. It's Sorry, so, it's so powerful. Sorry, yeah, I know you're going to say something. No, I was just saying it's it's interesting now. Like some of our family members, like I'm thinking sort of younger generations, yeah. how they've been brought up in an age of technology, which I'm sure you've probably talked about a lot on previous yeah. podcasts. But whereas we as kids would be told to go outside, told to go play with like kids on the street, Absolutely. just be outside. And we'd mm. say be allowed to play, I don't know, the PlayStation for two hours and it'd be like, right, you've had enough, get yeah. off. Now it's... If that. <laughs> Kids are, have, have been given an iPad and they're sat in a corner and like entertain yourselves. There's not yeah. that interaction yeah. between even in games and stuff. So like when we went away, we've been really lucky as part of obviously the family being next door and then my dad's side of the family being quite big. As long as, as well as my mum's side, we go away with them and stuff as well. Really lucky to go away since we were kids to the uh, to a farm that we we've got a really good relationship with, and that's just kind of became a bit of a thing. And like Charlotte's saying, we would just be out playing on the farm yeah um you know we wouldn't we wouldn't be as we were on the holiday we've just had we wouldn't be playing a game at night with an ipad as a whole group no, i refuse yeah. to take them to so like it was it was a really you'd love it you'd absolutely love this game it was pictionary plus or something like that <laughs> um you download the app and there's a wand so you, you stand i'm excited already but i suppose the point you draw the thing in the air and then the people that have got their phones or the ipad that they're looking through the camera it draws no, that thing. Give up with wow. me. Genuinely. It's really clever. That sounds amazing. But I suppose drawing back to the point I'm making is we're a room full of supposedly well developed adults and younger children that are all being drawn into the screen and we're connecting through the screen rather than connecting to each other. To each other. Yeah. And it was really fun. You know, it was we did play other things. I did an outstanding quiz. I've heard <laughs> I a lot about so this quiz. We used to do that and like one of my cousins would make physical things for us to do together rather yeah. than we using I was using a speaker and I was using my iPad with the questions and stuff and, and I know it's you know that kind of isn't the same thing but 
in a sense, we used to go to the farm when we were young, when we were younger. I know we're digressing in terms of technology and who went out with a lad and all that, but we used to literally run around the farm and we'd go into into the stables. I remember stupidly, <laughs> I don't want to offend anybody here, but we used to, there was a big yard in the middle and there was a big patch. I remember masses of cabbages or something like that being piled up against these... Um, We're going to get complaints from vegans. Yeah, potentially. <laughs> hay, ba- hay bales, right? And and I can't remember how old it was, but I've climbed up these cabbages on top of these hay bales and there's a barn, massive long barn at the side with like a six, six seven foot wall and then a big gap, obviously, and then the, the roof and stuff. And I remember just cobbing or throwing these cabbages in and just waiting for the cows to go... <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, we were just being mischievous... Yeah. And and being with each other as so kids. And my That's theory, so with, my theory right. which is pretty much just thought of, so completely unsubstantiated, is I reckon, now that we're talking about it, the reason why people are more addicted or they're on screens more is because it's a very much watered-down connection compared to human connection. So the way that we grew up, we'd have that human connection, we'd be satisfied by that. So the yeah. relationships you had, the physical, the touch that we talked about, the talking, the reciprocation, the the laughter, the the discovery of stuff together, I think that gives you such a, a high and so you know, such a release of chemicals and things that it satisfies you. I don't think anyone can ever come off a Facebook app or whatever and think I'm satisfied. No. And that's, I suppose, the beauty of it. Exactly. Yeah. And is that, is that the reason yeah. why? You know, part of me thinks, is it because it's it's sort of a whole... It's like um, hollow it's carbs or whatever, effort, it's like, it? is it a hollow connection? Yeah. yeah. And because it's a hollow connection, they need it more. But well, it's because they need it more, it's it replaces. So easy to do. It's, it's, it's effort to go and see somebody. Yeah, where you've got that, that affirmation immediately. You post a photo or whatever, or leave a comment, and people reply Straight to it immediately. Yeah. You've got instantly. that instant hit of, of whatever chemicals it releases right there and then in your hand. Yeah. yeah. I think, that, you know, if I was doing that and I uploaded and I got so many likes... I'd immediately want it's to upload something feeling, else and get action. more likes. Yeah. Whereas if I cracked a joke right. at the pub yeah. and everyone laughed, yeah. I wouldn't have to crack another joke no. all night, you know. Yeah, I'd be done. quite well I would because I'm yeah. like that, you know, like a dog <laughs> with a bone. And the connection would be there and I wouldn't feel the need to try and increase that connection yeah. like you would online or through screens. Mm-hmm. Without diving into technology too much, because I feel like we could probably we do, do a full, full podcast on it. And that'll probably come in. I'm sure we've got that down on one of the lists. I suppose as a pre-question to the one that I've kind of got in my head next is how is how is it impacting on, on your relationships or how do you think it impacts on your relationships in terms of positively, negatively? I think I, I, it decreases the effort. Definitely. So when you go back yeah. to the effort, you know, if I think about myself and my wife, like by the time you're tired, you, you, you put the kids to bed, you've had tea, you sit down, you may be watching, so you, you're either watching something when you're eating tea or, you know, you you haven't had a chance all day. Um, and it's slightly different from my wife because she has her own shop and her own business and stuff, so she looks on social media sometimes mm-hmm. for ideas or, or to see if she's got orders or, Which is or, a or to post thing, stuff yeah. to kind of yeah. advertise the business. Yeah. So I suppose in a way it's the same, but, you know, you do end up making less time for each other, so it's less effort. Again, it goes back to that thing we talked about with, you know, relationships last when you make effort. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's I, something that I noticed when we were living together is I got us into the habit of after we'd eaten tea, we would go for a walk. Because if we didn't, we would automatically go on the phones or we'd go and watch something and then you don't talk. No. Yeah. And just going out for half an hour or an hour, we would end up mm. having some really in-depth conversations yeah. that we would not have if we were just sat Imagine in Imagine setting up a camera and filming the walk and with no sound and filming the... the watching just the TV with no sound and watching them yeah. both back. Just reading the body and language. just looking at the interaction and the body like And yeah. one of them's going to be completely vacant and just blank and the other smiles physical contact emotional satisfaction emotional satisfaction yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm a real burger for it and it's burger uh, <laughs> that's coming from <laughs> I'm a real burger I'm a real burger for, uh, for having a dig at my, my partner for being on a phone or for watching really terrible TV or watching in, watching videos of like pigs in pink tutus on, on every social media platform possible. So you might watch that on face, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Instagram Twitter, Twitter, YouTube. YouTube. But we're all just as guilty, right? Like, you know, I'm just as guilty as she is, and she probably doesn't hear that enough from me. But I think it it really does get in the way of of like you're saying, if you don't make that effort, like you were saying, John, about you know uh, that then has an impact on your relationship. But equally, if you do make the effort. 
uh, it can have a positive impact as well. Yeah, I'm such a, I'm so guilty of it. She absolutely hates me because as soon as she as soon as she touches her phone, I'm like, we do. <laughs> so the, so she the, hates it. So honestly, so I'm, the, I wind so up. So the difference is you you're quite confrontational in your I need to change your my way approach. Of, I think in your way of challenging that. Like yeah, whereas whereas Charlotte said, why don't Straight. we do this? And together. give an alternative. Work with yeah. the person. I'm yeah. straight in the two box when it comes to challenging that. And you've got a dog. You could go for walks. You're, oh, you're, God, a, high, yeah. you're a highly skilled trained practitioner as well. Yeah, Not yeah, but that goes out the window. It's, it's like, like when, they, when they say, like, hairdressers have really crap haircuts. Is that <laughs> <it>? <laughs> Same thing. Yeah. 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 Uh, one last thing, then. I think I want to know what, how your relationships impact on your ability to kind of support yourself. So through your experiences, your relationships with your family or with your friends, how they have impacted on your ability to support yourself. So I kind of tedious link into sign of self-care and mental health a little bit. I think for me, just to kick on, I I don't know if your, yours, will, yours will be similar, Charlotte, but I think the way that your relationships have grown or what you've experienced growing up, obviously, for me, it's had a massive impact on on the way that I do think about me or think about looking after or supporting myself. Yeah. We've been very lucky to obviously have auntie and uncle and cousins next door, so we spent a lot of time with people. We're a very kind of family-orientated group. You know, everybody's different. Everyone's different dynamics, different uh, people that are around or aren't around. Yeah. It'd be easy to draw on that attachment theory again, wouldn't it? Yeah. Because well? so like, if you don't have a, a, a strong enough attachment, then you're always going to be second-guessing you're always going to be trying to test to see if someone's safe. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're always going to be in that kind of zone where it's hard to care for yourself when you're worried about how everyone else is going to be caring or treating you. Yeah. I think uh, your experiences as well with that other uh, layer of, of intimacy, that other circle with, with your friends, and, and I think that has just as much of an impact. I know I've mentioned it before, but I played for a rugby team and we lost him to suicide. It must be nearly three years ago now. And I think experiencing that with friends... Strength in numbers. Yeah, you come together, Smart, don't you? And, yeah. and you, I think having the relationships with your friends, as it would do with family when you lose somebody within your family, but specifically around that kind of... that event, it, it really... Well, the only way to it really support drew, relational trauma is through relational Relationships, pair. yeah. And having, it, having people there. 100% saw the... So the benefit of that, I suppose, for want of a better way of saying it, in a sense of people being together and people coming together. And I think, I don't know what you guys will say from the perspective of other sport, but I think sport's got a real power. Rugby, I felt, in the community that I'm in, not just around that specific event, but you know, we had a legend pass away this year. And just the way that people come together and use relationships mm. to support each other. I must say that's brilliant. something that I noticed. So we lost our grand the back end of last year well summertime I think I mentioned it in the last yeah either the last one or the one before in a sense of how people that I'd not necessarily got massively strong relationships with because I'd only been working with them for a short amount of time really kind of supported and rallied around me which was amazing go on sorry for for me because I was in Spain at that point when it happened well actually no that's a lie I was in Portugal we were away on holiday but you you live in Spain you have no holiday yeah I (laughs) know Um, I really felt, so like it happened and all of my family, obviously, everybody grouped together and everyone was together. Literally, everyone just like... And I felt very removed, but I was very isolated from that and I felt Mm. very alone. Like as much as Tom supported me and he empathised with it, he obviously couldn't understand because it wasn't his grandparent and I did feel very much like I wanted to be at home to be with family who understood and have yeah. those that lack of rela- that lack of available relationships yeah. affected yeah. your ability to support yourself. Yeah, that absolutely. Time. Because Tom didn't have that connection with your grandma, so he couldn't understand it like the people no. at home. And obviously, yeah, so. you know, he had experienced death with family members yeah. and obviously with friends and what have you. But because he's not as he's in not part of that circle necessarily, is he? I suppose. No, I mean, obviously, he couldn't. He For could understand, way, but. I think, like, whereas with, like, if I'd have been with you, we, you know, she was our gran. So it was yeah. like, there's more of that relationship there. You would, you would understand 100% what, how I felt. Yeah. Whereas, obviously, you understood, but it just wasn't, it didn't have the same, like, depth of understanding I would think I would have had if I'd have been with family. That relationship that you have, like, when it is a family member. Yeah. yeah. And I, a, I don't different. think that's, I don't think that's because they can't. I think sometimes, personally, I think it's because, we've not 
shared the experiences with him. So it's, it's happened with me. So, like, you know, my wife's had loss. I lost my granddad. It was, like, a first big loss for me. And luckily, not that long ago. And and even though I know she knew him, and it, 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 I'll be sort of later because she didn't know him, like, from a child like yeah. I did, she supported me. She, I think she understood, but it's, I think it's us putting it on them rather than them not being able to understand it. We're looking for... Seeking it. Because we've lost that person, we've lost that connection, we've lost that relationship. So we're looking to the next relationship, I suppose, that's that's connected to them yeah. in the same way we were connected yeah. to them. I've been with my wife a, a long time and my, she's probably the one person I'm, can, I have a biggest connection with. We, we, you know, we've helped each other through these traumas and things. But because my connection with her was, is a different connection. Yeah. I think with risk of uh, going into too much detail and making you feel terrible, I think it made... I know, it's a risky one. When I when I drove to my grand on that day, I think having you know Tom, my cousin Tom and other people there that were in the same boat did help me. I know that does nothing for you. No, I know, but, that, <laughs> but that's, but that's exactly what I needed. Saying. The question is, how's it? Yeah, relationships impact your ability to support yourself. And I think having yeah. somebody and who was literally self care, which was the yeah, which we seem to have gone like in a big round yeah. Yeah. way of oh, yeah. saying it. But yeah, but yeah, I think that did have a real impact because I knew that the subconsciously knew that, that they were kind of experiencing Same a similar thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy yeah. to empathise then. Right then. I suppose we'll draw a close there. Yeah. Thanks for listening again. Feel free to send us um, some suggestions. Please get in touch if you want to be a whippet. Big, massive thank you for my sister for turning up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're welcome anytime. Pleasure. You're better uh, than Jacob, much better. Yeah, loads better. <laughs> Give us a follow on Twitter and on SoundCloud and stuff. It's at 3 Whippet. And I suppose we'll turn to Luke. Luke's line. For Luke's line. You've all been waiting for it. It's the only reason. It's the only reason. It's a connection you've been after all the time. (laughs) Come on then, here we go. Those that are the hardest to love are the ones that need loving the most. Brilliant. Yeah. See you then. See you guys then. Ta-ra.